Welcome to this uh, short demo about how to consume uh, third-party APIs in Viva Connections. Uh, like usual, let me share a few technical things and then I will move to the demo environment. So uh, just to set the context, uh, here we're going to see how we can uh, consume a third-party API or a custom API, which can be something built with an Azure function or an ASP.NET REST API or whatever else you like. We simply need to register uh, the API as an Azure Active Directory application in uh, the target Azure AD tenant, uh, and we need to expose an API, and we will see how to do that. Once you've done that, uh, you need to configure in the package solution JSON file of your uh, SPFX solution, because an adaptive card extension at the very end is just uh, a, an SPFX solution. You will have to configure the Web API permission request section to declare what kind of permissions you need to consume the target API. You will eventually have to consent uh, your uh, application in a target tenant if you are creating a multi-tenant solution. And then you will have to grant the permissions to consume that API, and you will be ready to use the AAD HTTP client that we have in SPFX uh, in order to consume the API and show the output in a car view or in a quick view. So uh, rather than talking, uh, let me show you what I mean uh, in practice. So I will start showing you uh, an actual uh, demo ACE, which is uh, simply based on the idea of uh, showing uh, a set uh, of stock values. And uh, don't be scared, these are fake values, so don't jump on your chair if it is higher or lower than what is actually uh, the current value of any of these stocks. This is just based on a fake uh, uh, list of stocks. So it is close to uh, uh, today's values, but not exactly exactly uh, the uh, current values. This is an adaptive card extension running uh, right now in the workbench. And if I click on edit, we can see that it has been configured in order to consume an external quote service, which is a fake one that I created for the sake of this demo. And I'm providing right here as a setting, uh, a comma separated list of stock symbols that I want to get uh, through my API. So how can we uh, create such an adaptive card extension? How can we create the backend API in order to make it possible to create such kind of solution? So first of all, let me show you the SharePoint framework solution. So here we are in the adaptive card extension, and this is a very simple adaptive card extension in which in the on init method, I simply configure the state of the ACE. And in fact, in my state, I simply keep track of the current symbol, current quote, and the trend up or down for the current quote. Then we have in the on it method the uh, initialization of the state, and we uh, create uh, an instance of an AAD HTTP client object that we have in SPFX, and as such, we have it in adaptive card extensions as well. And I simply get an instance through the AAD HTTP client factory of an HTTP client, AAD HTTP client for a specific target API, which will be identified by the unique URI of my API as it was registered in Azure Active Directory. And we will come back to this value later on in this demo. Once I have my client, AD uh, HTTP client instance, I can simply load uh, the quotes for my stocks simply using a custom method that I defined, the load quote one, which I will execute asynchronously to speed up the uh, initialization process of my ACE. And as such, uh, in half a second, I will start loading the quotes. So what I do right here, I simply rely on some custom business logic, I will not dig into it, but I simply need to go through all of the stock symbols that I configure. So one by one, I will make a query. But the interesting part of this demo is how we make the query. So using the AAD HTTP client that we created before, we simply make a GET request, for example, because our API uh, accepts a GET HTTP request, uh, and it will provide back the stock quota of the symbol that we will request. So I simply provide the URL of the uh, backend service that I want to use. Notice that this is a property in the list of properties that I have in my adaptive card extension. So when I say here in the UI that this is the URL of my backend quote service, this is the value that I will find in the properties of my adaptive card extension instance. And as such, I can simply build, dynamically build based on the settings, the URL of the backend service, and I will provide in the query string the symbol that I want to use to get uh, the uh, quote. Once I've done that, I will get back a JSON uh, response, which I can convert into an actual JSON object, 
based on a stock quote info type, which is the actual type of the result of my custom API. In your scenario, it will be your custom type. In my scenario, a stock quote info is made of few information like the string uh, representing the symbol, the quote, which is number, the trend up or down, and the user who made the request. Why? Because I want to show you in this demo how we can also get the security context of the user invoking the backend API. In fact, whenever I make a request to my backend function, I also get back who is the user making the request so that we can uh, see uh, practically how we can get access to the information about who is the user making the request. So back to my load quote function or uh, method, I simply get back the uh, stock info object and I use it to uh, configure the state of my adaptive card extension. As we already saw in some of the other demos in these SIG calls, once I have the state configured in my adaptive card extension, I can use it, for example, in the rendering of a card view, which is precisely what I'm doing right here. So I have a card view, which is the one we see in the UI of the adaptive card, and in the card view, we render as the primary text, the symbol. And as the description, we read the state trend to see if we are going up or down, and we render accordingly the uh, uh, arrow. And then we render the quote value, which will be in US dollars. So that's the client side part of the story, together with the package solution.json file, in which I configure that my application requires to uh, have access to the stock quote function app with the permission scope called read.stockquote. So I'm declaring that my uh, SPFX solution requires to consume this API with this specific permission scope. I create a package, I upload the package in the app catalog, which is something that we can do right now. Actually, my solution is already running, but I will do it again just for the sake of completeness. So if I drag and drop this application and I replace it in the app catalog, we can see that this application is going to consume an external API and we will need to grant proper permissions to this application. And uh, of course, this is the demo effect, so I don't see the dialog right now, but at the very end, in the uh, advanced section API access of my SharePoint Admin Center, I will be able to grant in the list of pending requests or to see that I already granted, like I already did in my scenario, the stock quote function app application. Uh, I granted the SharePoint framework to consume the stock quote function app backend API uh, using the read.stockquote permission. How is built the backend API? Well, it is a nature function that I've built using Visual Studio 2019. As I said, it is a fake one, so I don't really read the real values, but I simply provide a hard-coded value for all of the stocks because it doesn't really matter how we get the stock value. This is just for the sake of making an example. But this is a function in which I, first of all, use dependence injection to get the claim principle of the user making the request, meaning that easily and really in a straightforward uh, uh, way, I get inside the Azure function the claim principle of the user making the request. And when I create my response, I simply provide all of the values, including the identity.name, if any, as you can see, of the claim principle that I get as an input of the request. So how do I get inside the claims principle the identity of the user and how can I call this API? Well, in Azure Active Directory, I registered an application in my target tenant, and this is the name of the application that I was using in SPFX in order to declare the permission request, as you can see. I declared this application, I registered it, and I decided that I wanted to expose an API. This is the unique URI of my application, and again, this is the value that we use in SPFX when we create a client through a DHCP client factory. So this is the unique URI of my exposed API. And this is the permission that I'm requesting the uh, grant for. So I registered the application in Azure AD. Then I configured my application, my Azure function app in Azure AD in order to uh, work as the front end of my API. And here we are in Azure, um, in Azure and here we are in the uh, Azure function app. Here, the app could be configured either to use the uh, uh, 
authentication provided out of the box uh, uh, by uh, the Azure function, which is not the case in my scenario. But if you want, you can click on the on button here and you can configure to use Azure Active Directory from the UI of the Azure function. Or you can rather want to use uh, at low level in your function app, uh, the claims principal information and do your authorization and authentication logic in your custom code right here. It is completely up to you. I also configured, sorry, in the Azure function that I will be able to talk with the tenant, the SharePoint tenant that will consume my API. So in the course settings, I configured my function to uh, work uh, with the uh, consumer under this uh, uh, tenant.sharepoint.com. And as such, my uh, Azure function will be able to uh, be accessible by the SharePoint framework component that I defined. And in fact, if I go back here, where I consume the API and I click on network, we can see that we have all of the requests for the uh, backend API. And we can see that thanks to the AAD HTTP client factory, which created an instance of the AAD HTTP client, we also have injected in every request that will go to the backend API, a bearer open authorization access token. Let me copy the value of this token. And if I will open JWT or jot.ms and copy that value, we can see that under the cover of this really unreadable value we have inside this JOT uh, token, we have the information that we have a, an open authorization token for the API with this uh, audience. So this is the unique URI of my target API. I can see that I have the read stock quote permission, and I can see the information of the user who is going to consume the backend API. This is the token which will be provided to my backend API so that inside the API, I can have my custom logic for authentication and authorization. So really simple and straightforward. You register an API in Azure Active Directory. You configure the API to be exposed as an API with a unique URI. In the SPFX solution in the ACE, you get a client for that specific URI. You use the REST-based approach, so you make a GET, a POST, or whatever else HTTP method you need to use to consume your target API. And you need to remember to declare in the Web API permission requests that you want to have access to that specific API accordingly to the permission model that you configure for the API itself. So that said, I think we can go back to you, Patrick. Thank you, and I hope you found it uh, useful. Thank you. Thank you, Paolo. Fantastic demo as always. Really great to see all those steps for connecting to an API. There's a lot to do, but Paolo laid it out very nicely and clearly there. So thank you for that wonderful demo. Mm -hmm.